Hi, thanks for watching this X-Men video tutorial on audio effects and restoration in Magix Vegas. Go! It's been said before that the most important aspect of your video is the audio. And to a degree, I agree. You could have an excellent product on the video side of things, but if you have bad audio, it can ruin everything. Why do you have to ruin everything, man? I don't know. I've got something bad inside of me. I ruin things. So in this episode, I'm going to go over some ways for you to make sure your audio is the best it can be. To start, it's important to know that each audio track you have is mixed into your master audio. You can add effects here if you want the effect to be applied to all of the audio in your project. For example, I always add the compressor effect to my master audio to help avoid peaking in my final renders. Simply click the effects icon here, double click the track compressor, and click OK. If you're not an audio engineer like me, go right ahead and trust your presets. My brother happens to be an audio engineer, so he's taught me quite a lot, but since it's all very complicated and I don't want to bug him constantly with a million questions, I still trust my presets. Here I'll select the limit levels to negative 6 decibels, and negative 6 might be a little too hard, so I'll change it here to negative 3. What this does is compresses any spikes or peaks in my audio so the final output stays close to but under 0 decibels. It can still go over if it's a very large spike. In that case, I would either adjust this limiter or edit that specific peak on the timeline. On the timeline, each audio track is created with three default effects. We'll click the effects icon here to view them. We have a noise gate, a track EQ, and a track compressor. These are here for convenience, and the idea here is to adjust these based on the audio you put on the track. So let's bring in some bad audio. This clip was recorded out on a construction site. The levels were a little too hot, and the wind was blowing at about 24 miles per hour. Not an ideal situation for audio recording. Well, I'm learning how to do a, what they call a reset, and I'm learning that one because we really haven't gone... But let's see what we can do to clean it up a bit. First, I'm going to normalize the audio by right-clicking on the clip on the timeline and finding switches, and then normalize. You see right away that the levels have spiked way up. What normalizing does is raises the gain until the highest peaks are level with zero decibels. So now that we have a normal volume level to work with... Well, I'm learning how to do a, what they call a reset, and I'm learning that one because we really haven't gone into that too much on a lot of jobs I've been on. And We can hear that the audio is distorted a little. The wind is very noticeable, and the background noise isn't too bad, but we probably like to remove as much of it as we can. So you'll get to your audio effects just like you would your video effects by clicking on this icon on your audio clip here on the timeline. Depending on your version of Vegas, you'll have more or less effects here. You'll add your desired effects by double clicking. In this case, I'll add a track EQ, smooth slash enhance. And even though some versions of Vegas might not have it, I'll try this Express FX audio restoration effect and click OK. First, I'll uncheck the restoration and smooth slash enhance effects and work only with the track EQ. This is what I'm going to use to try to get rid of some of that rumble caused by the wind. And to do that, I'll make sure the low shelf is enabled and I'll drop the gain. Put the frequency right around 250 and ramp the roll off all the way up. It doesn't remove the wind noise, but what this does is removes the sub-level rumble. It's on a lot of jobs I've been on and a lot of people talk about reset I've been on and a lot of people talk been on and a lot of people talk about been on and a lot of people talk about re and that helps a little now let's turn on the smooth slash enhance effect here we're looking to smooth out some of that background noise so I'll bring the operation down to negative three well I'm learning how to do a, what they call a reset and I'm learning and that's a little better it's a good idea to place your loop markers around a specific area and turn on the looping playback while doing audio cleanup work what they call a reset and I'm learning uh, what they call 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 reset. Next, let's see what we can do with the restoration effect. Here I'm going to max out the click removal and the reduced noise and I'll adjust the noise floor until I find the best result. What they call reset and I'm learning uh, what they call reset and I'm learning uh, what they call reset and I'm learning uh, what they call reset, and I'm learning uh, what they call... Here I think we've restored a little of that distorted or peaking audio. You can play with these settings and others to find the right result for your specific audio clip. If you want the absolute best in audio restoration and cleanup, I recommend the Isotope RX-5 plug-in pack. 
It is 100% worth the investment if you're going to be doing a lot of audio cleanup work. To give you an example, I'll get rid of the restoration and smooth effect, I'll keep the track EQ, and add the isotope D-clip and dialog D-noise effects. In the D-clip effect, I'll set the extreme analog clipping preset and bring the threshold all the way in at negative 16, so the effect will repair the full range of the audio. It's important to know that sometimes you won't really notice the results of this effect until you render out a new audio track. Well, I'm learning how to do a, what they call a reset, and I'm learning that one because we really haven't gone into that too much. On a in the dialog denoise effect, I'll set it to manual, click learn, and then put my playhead in a spot on the clip where there's nothing but background noise before he speaks, and hit play. The reason for this is I'm telling the effect what the background noise is first, so when the voice comes in, it will be able to better detect what part of the audio to remove. It only needs a second or two of the audio to learn, so we'll hit play. And I, I just take it a step learns, back and... And we'll stop there. Now when we play it back, we'll hear right away an incredible result. And I, I just take a step back and get back into reality. I'll just adjust the reduction amount and the threshold a little until I've got the best result. And I, I just take a step back and get back into reality. And that's it. So here is our original audio, and we'll compare that to the cleaned audio. Well, I'm learning how to do a, what they call a reset. And I'm learning that one because we really haven't gone into that too much on a lot of jobs I've been on. And a lot of people talk about reset and it's not something I'm really used to seeing or doing. And, uh, you know, I, I just take a step back and get back into reality. I take a breath, look at my situation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share.